I was born in Syracuse and I was raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. And how old were you when you made that move? Um, I was pretty young, man. I was like, I mean, I, I started in, uh, first we came to Georgia when I was like, I think I was probably like a baby baby. And then we moved from Atlanta, Georgia to Augusta, Georgia, and then from Augusta, Georgia to Charlotte, and I was living there for about 16, 17 years, so that's where I was really, really raised. Why the uh, different moves there? My dad was a brick mason, so, I mean, he went he went where the money was, and I mean, that's what he always chased. I mean, he, he all about that bread, so. Mm. Uh, still currently living in Charlotte? I am still living in Charlotte. Certain part of Charlotte you represent? Um, I represent the Northeast, so I'm over. Basically, what we call that is UV. So you got a you got a whole bunch of divisions. You got you got HV that's on their side. You got UV that's on their side. You got the West side. You got the South side. So I represent UV because that's where I'm from. I mean, it's uh basically it's a university. It's a breakdown, and a lot of people don't know that because a lot of people ain't made it to this this platform yet. I mean, we got look, we got the baby, and that's it. I mean. Honestly. Now, what was it like for you growing up in Charlotte? Can you paint that picture for us? I mean, it was pretty straight. My, my mom and dad was, like I said, they was about that bread. So <laughs> we we always had that bread. So I always had the newest J's and stuff like that. So they ain't never did me wrong. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't, it wasn't that I was rich either, though. I mean, so. Upper middle class? I wouldn't say upper middle, I'd say middle class. Middle right? class. I'd say middle class, yeah. Now, uh, doesn't sound like a very rough upbringing. Nah, I ain't have no rough upbringing. If we did anything, we made it for ourselves. So, I mean, like, any bad thing that happened to us, we, we pretty much did it ourselves, because that's what my mom and dad lived by this open door thing where they let you do not what you wanted to at the same time, but at the same time, they they let you be a man. They let you be a woman. So that's that's honestly what it was. So we got into trouble. We, now we did get our ass whooped, I ain't gonna lie. We got our ass whooped. When it came time and we did some crazy shit, we got our ass whooped, so. When you say crazy, what was the craziest? The craziest thing I did was rob somebody. That was, a, that was about the... That was about the craziest thing I did. How old was this? I was probably about 14, 15. Very young. Yeah. Why? I just, I don't know, man. I just, I just, that's something I felt like doing. I just, I don't know. It wasn't right. It wasn't wrong. Well, it was wrong. It wasn't right. You know, so, I mean, I, I probably shouldn't have did it. I ain't gonna lie. I probably shouldn't have did it. I ain't even need it, to be honest with you. I mean, like I said, my family always had the bread, but at the same time, I just was like, I don't know, let's go rob some nigga. So <laughs> that's what happened. We, you know, so nigga snitched on us. We got caught. And uh, yeah, I'm on, this, I'm on this platform, so I'm gonna say it. If I see him, bro, it's, 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 it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You went to juvenile? Mm hmm. Uh, how much time? I was probably in there for about two, three months. I missed Christmas, actually. So, that was <laughs> the, the family joke is I, I, I come home and I eat everything. That's what I do. I ain't fat right now, but I was a big nigga back in the day. <laughs> like, for real. What was your parents' reaction to this? They was disappointed. They they wanted to make sure I was straight, you know, so they... This time I, I didn't get a whooping, but they made sure, like, that I was a grown man, so they made sure that they sent me to the military. That's that's where I ended up at. So, okay, you do two, three months in juvenile. That was your punishment, or that was just awaiting sentencing was, or whatever the punishment there was? So he had already snitched, so it was over from there, so... I mean, we, we went to, they, um, it was pretty much like our arraignment, but at the same time, the story was already told, so it wasn't nothing I could really do. So, 
I mean, I just told them that it is what it is. They took they took the plea deal or whatever. I was like, yo, this, you already caught, we already got our snitch, so, <laughs> I mean, you win, you, you, you're you done. So you might as well just go ahead and take this plea deal. So took a plea deal, my junk got sealed, and that allowed me to go to the military, so. I see. Um, and we'll talk about the military in a few. Um, okay. Uh, so you did this uh, in your youth. Um, what about a kid going to school? What kind of kid were you in class? I was wild. <laughs> I mean, I, to me, it was like my mom and dad told me to go to school, do all of that stuff, but I just wanted to turn up. I just wanted to be around, you know, doing not doing what everybody else wanted to do, but just having fun with my youth. And to me at the time, that seemed, that seemed fun. I mean, like doing the acting out, doing all that crazy stuff. I mean, skipping school, that seemed fun to me at the time. So were you involved in street activity? Were you involved in gang activity, that sort of thing? I don't wanna answer that question. <laughs> I don't even wanna answer that question. Okay. <laughs> Too much freedom? It wasn't that I had too much freedom. It was just that the little freedom that I had, I made the most of it. Uh, do you have kids now yourself? I do. I got two. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about, now that you're a parent, how do you feel about that policy that your parents had for you where they gave you a certain type of freedom, maybe not all the way, but they gave you that little sliver there and you maxed it out, sounds like. So I How do you at, treat your kids? I mean, I look at it like this. My mom and dad raised five kids. All five of them graduated high school. All of them um, is doing real pretty good for themselves. So, I mean, in the end, it worked out. I mean, I have I was the only one that had a, that rough patch that I went through and got, <laughs> and got caught. I mean, but I was the only one that had that rough patch. And so, I mean... It's a good policy. I mean, to be honest with you, all of them graduated high school, all of them doing good for themselves. You know, um, I mean, that's that's pretty much, that's that's like the goal for, people want to see their kids graduate because some people, kids don't even make it to 15, 16, you know what I'm saying? So 18, they don't, they don't make it to that age. Are you going to keep this policy for your kids as they grow up? I'm sure I am. I mean. It's the right policy. I mean, it, it worked. If, I mean, if you get a five out of five chance to do something, why not keep doing it? It, it works. Just curious, because you do have some parents that are really strict, right? And then you have some parents that are really lenient. And then you have some parents, maybe like how you described, kind of like in the middle there. Yeah, because the ones that be real strict, <laughs> their daughters and sons be wild. I mean, I know some some preacher kids who they they talk about the Bible. They like this, 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 and then all of a sudden, you know, they the kid out there selling selling the brick. And so, I mean, it just like that strict stuff don't really work, and the loose stuff. I mean, like you putting your kid out there, basically, you just providing a house for them. You're not you're not really telling them nothing. So, neither one of those work. Now, um, what kind of, uh, in school, when it came to, I mean, you said you were, how did you describe yourself, wild as a, as a kid in class? I mean, I, was, I tried, you know, I was like the class clown. I used to do crazy stuff. I used to just be in class clown, and that's it, like, every day. Every day is something new. I got a new joke. I got some wild stuff to say, so. Sometimes uh, there's class clowns that are just jokes, right? It's fun, it's teasing, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Then there's some class clowns where it starts to be bullying yeah. and that sort of thing. What, which type were you? No, I wasn't no bully. I wasn't no, I mean, I chill with the nerds. I chill with the popular kids, the nerds, the golfs. I, everybody knew me, so it wasn't like I was out there wilding out, you know what I'm saying? Like just picking on one specific kid or you know, we, I mean, we cooked each other every now and again. I don't know if you know a cooking mean, but 
you like know, teasing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we straight flame people sometimes, but I mean, it, it is what it is, you know. I got flames sometimes too. Now, what about uh, music? Music. I love music. When did that start? How young? Uh, I was in the military. Um, I actually never, ever really thought about rapping. I mean, my brothers my brothers used to rap. Their friends used to rap. And I used to go out there, and I used to be so trash. Like, I used to be super duper trash. I, I mean, I, it was one time I said... <laughs> <laughs> I, I said something like, my name is Klaus. Don't think I won't evict you from your house. They all looking at me like, what the fuck is you talking about? I'm like, yo, listen, like, this is what I got. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is fire. They like, nah, nigga, we not finna put you on no track saying that wild shit. So uh, I moved out to Colorado and I met I met my boy Manners and uh, he was rapping all the time. He just, he just was rapping all the time and that's all they was doing. So I was like, yo, you know what? I know I'm better than these niggas. Like, I know I'm better than these niggas. So it was always a challenge. I mean, man is honestly the one that really, really, really taught me how to rap. Like, he taught me how to construct, how to how to put the metaphors in there. Cause niggas ain't got no metaphors no more. Niggas go out there. So he taught me how to put it. Cause he's from New York. You know what I'm saying? So he taught me how to actually go in depth and and say what I mean and do this here and you know what I'm saying so yeah so you weren't really doing music while you were in school this came more into adulthood more when you were in the military and that sort of thing yeah but I signed my contract when I was 17 years old so at the looking back at it, I don't feel like I was a, I don't feel like I was a full man yet you know so by the time I left for the military it was like I was still impressionable. I ain't gonna say I was no follower because I ain't never been no goddamn following. I don't follow no fucking body. I mean, I, I, I'm the nigga that was wearing tight clothes when tight clothes wasn't in. So I ain't gonna say I, I follow nobody, but I liked it. I like music. I like music a lot. I like to deconstruct it and listen to the beat and listen to the bars and listen to what niggas actually got to say because some niggas just say stupid shit all day. While you were in school, you didn't do the band, you didn't do the chorus, none of those type of classes. <laughs> Yo, so look, when I was in middle school, I played the cymbals. I, I played the cymbals, like, and we ain't had no, like, we went, we didn't go to no, like, when we was uh, in middle school, we didn't go to no rich middle school or nothing like that. They had bandanas around the, around the cymbals, and I'm out there playing. I'm just, but you know, like, I ain't really never took no extracurriculars serious like I take this. So, I mean, I know it's music, but I ain't never really take no extracurricular serious at all. No sports? I mean, I played football for like one year. I was like on JV. So, I mean, I, I thought I liked it, but this is the only thing I actually been passionate about for a numerous amounts of years. Now, what about, uh, like, while you were in high school, what about any superlatives as a senior? Did you, uh, did you get any superlatives? I mean, I had a dual diploma in computer science. I mean, that's, but, yeah, that's, that's pretty Superlatives, much. I mean, like, you know, they give these little awards, like, in the yearbook, like, you'll see, like, most likely to succeed. Oh, no, nah, I was look, best dressed. Sometimes I was hardly there. It just depends on the, the year that you that you want to count. Huh. But I was I was hardly there. So it was like I was doing stuff. But you did, <laughs> but you did graduate. I did graduate. I did graduate on time, too. Now, the military situation, you didn't do any ROTC program or anything like that while you were, <laughs> while you were in school, did you? So I had a. I did do some ROTC. I had a, um, I had a colonel. His name was like Colonel Orr or something like that. They used to say he was allergic to deodorant because his name used to be musty every day. But like, I don't know, man. I just I didn't wear my my uniform like I was supposed to. So them niggas was like, "Yo, you can't come back next year." And I'm a freshman. I'm like, "Well, shit, I like this shit because my brothers was already in the process of going to the military." I was like, I'm gonna go to the military, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna let them down, I'm gonna go to the military too. So 
it just was like, damn, that nigga done kicked me the fuck out. I was in ninth grade when that shit happened. I was like, but plus I wasn't there too. That was the other thing. So they was like, nah, I mean, you can't come back here. I was like, all right, bet. I find some other shit to do. You said your parents had shipped you out to the military? They didn't necessarily ship. My brothers was already in the military and they felt like it was a good idea to make sure that I go serve my country too. So that's what I did. I did it for four years. Okay, so you joined the military right after high school. Mm -hmm. uh, was there any thoughts on college where this was the plan? Definitely not. I did not want to be in school no more. Like, I ain't saying it's bad for all these. I mean, it's, I done made $100,000 not being in school with a real job. Like, straight on paper, straight, straight with the IRS, I done made $100,000 in the one year. So I don't feel that. I ain't gonna say it ain't necessary, but it ain't necessary for me to make $100,000 a year to do that. It's not. Somebody watching this might be questioning, what can you do to, uh, how, do you, how do you get $100,000 on papers uh, without <laughs> no uh, college degree? I mean, I sold cars. I sold cars straight up. It was, it was months I was making 10 grand. It was months I was making eight grand. So, I mean, it was, it's lucrative, so. Car, car salesman. Yeah. Now, okay, uh, you did the military for four years. You fulfilled your military contract? No, I didn't. You didn't? I did not. Can you explain? Um, I'm going to just say there's some, you got, you got some, I respect the military. My brother's still in right now. My brother, uh, E6 in the military. So, I mean, that's, that's good. For him to be in there as long as he was in there, he ain't, he ain't been in there mad long where it's people who been in for 20 years who ain't made it to E6. So, I mean, I respect the military, but at the same time, it wasn't for me. Uh, I just was me. Like, I, I ain't changing for nobody. I'm not changing for the military. I'm not changing for nobody. And I mean, I, I appreciate the military, but at the same time, it's not for everybody. What was your original contract for? Six years and 32 weeks. And uh, you fell short of that? I ain't gonna say I fell short. I, I feel like I completed my time that I, needed to, that, that I needed to complete. What kind of discharge was it? I got a general under honorable conditions, which is right under our honorable condition. Okay. Can you explain the difference between that versus an honorable discharge? Uh, honorable discharge, all they get is uh, the extra stuff that they get is like, um, what is it? <laughs> um, I think they get education benefits. That's that's what they get out of it. That's extra from what I get out of it. But other than that, I mean, it's pretty much the same. Mm. And uh, lower than that would be? A dishonorable discharge. And what happens when somebody gets that? Dishonorable discharge, they just done with you. Like they, they throw you to the side, you don't get nothing. You, you just wild. Like you gotta be super duper wild to get something like that. So I mean, and I respect them for still serving their time too. Mm. You know, we, we brothers, so we all, we all stick together. I mean, I respect them for doing it, at least having the courage to sign the papers cause everybody ain't gonna sign them. Now overall, was it a good or bad experience for you? in those four years? I had fun. I got to do shit that I would never, ever, ever be able to do. I got to do a lot of shit that I'd never, ever, ever be able to do. Easy or tough? Um, a lot of it I can't even speak about. I'm a, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I can't even speak about it. I mean, I was on a whole nother level with the job that I had. Mm. Uh, hindsight 2020, uh, was that the right decision for you to make, joining the military? Yeah, that's, that's, I got my kids, I got my wife, I mean, I got a lot of stuff out of that, so, I mean, it's, yeah, that, that, I got the experience, too, so, I mean, it was a lot of stuff that I got out of there that I probably would have never, ever, ever seen without actually going through that. Mm. Now, what branch did you serve in? I was in the army. And why that choice for you? I mean, 
You could have been in the Marines. You could have been in the Navy. <laughs> I ain't want to do no Marines. I ain't want to do no Marines. But, I mean, like, I wanted to join the Air Force, but just looking at, like, I don't want to. I want to be politically correct when I say that, but I feel like the army was the right choice for me, just because. I mean, at the time, they they probably could have shaped me up, but I mean, yeah. Now, uh, were you stationed in the U.S.? Did you go overseas at all? Um, so I started basic. I was in uh, Fort Jackson, South Carolina. Um, did my AIT in, in um, Fort Huachuca, Arizona, and then went to Col and went to Colorado for my first duty station. So I was in Colorado for those whole that whole length of time. Mm. So could you have gone overseas? Was that a choice at all, or no? Right before I got out, I was supposed to go to Korea, <laughs> but and that's where my brother at right now. He he, I mean, he enjoying himself. So I mean. I probably would have got to see something, because I, to be honest, I mean, how many black people, you know, just going to say, okay, boom, we, we just going to go to Korea, you know what I'm saying? So at the time, it, it probably would have been good for me to go experience that, but I'm going to experience it through the music anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Well, when you were supposed to go to Korea, was that something you chose to do or you wanted to do, or is that something that they assign you? Oh, they don't let you pick. <laughs> they do not let you pick. That's not something that... That's not something the military allow you to do at first, you know. When you when you down there, I got up to I got up to an E four. So when you down there in the ranks, they don't they don't let you pick. They say, okay, well, you, motherfucker, you going here because we need you here. That's that's where you going. So hmm. I see. Do you get a choice of whether you want to stay in the U S. or go overseas, or are you just saying they don't give you a choice when you are overseas type of thing? <laughs> they give you a preference. I mean, I they give you a preference, and then they put you wherever the hell they need you. When it comes to uh, the military, I know you kind of said in the beginning of this portion of the interview that uh, I guess you didn't want to, I forgot how you phrased it, but something along the lines of uh, you can't force you to do things you didn't want to do, something of that nature, right? Mm -hmm. um, what was your, I don't know if that answer is for this question, but I'm going to ask anyways. What's your biggest pet peeve, or what bothered you the most about being in the military? I mean, they treated when you that low, when you low on the on the totem pole. Sometimes they treat you like a child, and I mean, if you acting like a child, yeah, they. I mean, yeah, that's what's gonna happen. But it was more to it where they. I mean, they could take away your money. They could put you in the barracks. And I mean, you you confined to the bears. They got guards outside where you can't you can't leave your room. So I mean, it, it gets crazy. Where I can go to a normal job and say fuck y'all, I quit. I can't just do that, you know. So it's it's crazy. I mean, I've seen my fuckers been in there, been gone for ten years. They've been AWOL for ten years, and then all of a sudden this motherfucker pop up and he in your formation, and they like, and that nigga like that nigga like forty two, and they like, oh yeah, he it's over for him. He about to be done. I'm like, damn. And that nigga, fuck, I'll rank this motherfucker, you know? So it was just like, at the time, like, they they crazy, man. It, it, it wasn't for me. I ain't gonna say they crazy. I'll never say that, because I, I definitely, I definitely appreciate everybody's service who go and do it. Because it, it's for real. It's for real. On the flip side, uh, what was the best part uh, or the most important Thing you enjoyed uh, being in there for four years? Doing stuff I never get to do. I mean, shooting guns. Like, ain't no. I can go back to the block right now. Ain't nobody out there shooting no 50 cal. Ain't nobody out there chopping down trees with it. Ain't nobody out there rolling around in the mud, shooting guns and doing whatever. Like, it ain't doing whatever you want to do, but at the same time, like, it's doing stuff that normal people can't do. I mean, like, it's crazy. Like, you just get to do so much stuff. I mean, you get to ride around in these Humvees. You you got bulletproof vests on you. I mean, it, it's, it's like a movie every day. Every day is something new. It's like a movie every day. You did rap inside those four years. Mm -hmm. um, did everyone know about this? No. Was it public or? 
No. This is probably about as public as it's going to This is probably about as public as it is. This is probably the biggest stage that I actually... I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> like I rap. Like, that's what I do. I rap. I don't care that everybody know. But it just, at the time, like, I can't go in there and tell my sergeant, yo, I be rapping, I be out here. Because they, they, that shit is like a punishment. Like, you're going to be on punishment for doing this. You're going to be on, especially if I'm not politically, because I, right now I can say fuck Donald Trump. You know what I'm saying? They can't say fuck Donald Trump to their superior, they superior officers, especially if the motherfucker a Donald Trump supporter, and be like, oh, you out of here. We, you just disrespect, I don't even got to go through that. Fuck Donald Trump. Straight up. <laughs> now, were there other people in the military that were rapping, aside yourself? Yeah, my boy Man, Manis is his last name. Um, but yeah, my boy Manis actually was rapping. He wasn't like, he was good. He was good at it. He just, he didn't want to pursue it. You know, I'm, I'm ready to pursue mine because I know I'm good at it. Was he private as well about it or was he public about it while he was serving? It was just something, that, it was more like a hobby to him. He, it was more like a a poet, like, you know, a poet write poets, or poems all the time, and sometimes they don't, they don't reveal them to everybody. They just have them there for their hobby. So that's more of what it was for him. For me, I found out I got good at this shit, and I was like, yo, I'm out this bitch. I'm about to go show everybody I'm good at this shit. Now, are there currently, or maybe rappers that have been in the past, uh, been successful with a military background before? Do you know any? <laughs> I mean, do do you? Know? I don't know. I don't. That's not something I actually looked into, but I don't really think so. I don't know any. I don't know nobody who served the military and came out and out this bitch rapping and they're actually like good at it. And that I, it's people that's rapping. Like my boy rapping right now. He in the military. About to get out. Shout out. But I mean, like. To actually make it to another platform? No. I don't know nobody. Mm. Is that discouraging to you when you uh, look at a statistic like that? Or is that encouraging to you? I, it's encouraging because I, I call myself K-Lot the greatest. I don't think nobody better than me. I'm going to just be honest. I mean, you got, some, you got some people out there who've been in the game for a minute, but I think I'm better than them. So that's what's going to make me make it. Hindsight 2020. Mm -hmm. Any regrets on those four years? No. I did I did something that people couldn't do. Like I said before, I did something that people couldn't do. And it gave me experiences that I never, ever have if it wasn't for the military. But at the same time, yeah. That, I mean, that's, that's really it. It just gave me something that niggas couldn't do that. Like, shit, people in my, in my neighborhood couldn't do that shit, like, so, unless they was in the military. What about fulfilling that contract? Uh, do you regret not doing all six years and 32 weeks? Shit, no, it's about the money. I got out and uh, I made 80 bands, so I, would, I was done with that shit. As soon as I made 80 bands, I was like, cause I mean, they was trying to scare a nigga too. They was like, yo, when you get out of there, ain't no jobs out there, it's a recession, it's all of this. I'm like, okay, well, look, I'm a y'all kicking me out, so shit, I'm out this bitch. I'm gonna go ahead and do what I gotta do. I'm gonna make this bread somehow, one way or another. What about the branch choice? Any regrets there on the branch choice? Nah. <laughs> them other ones was nah. Some of them too hardcore, some of them too softcore. But I ain't gonna I ain't gonna I ain't gonna spit on nobody. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna spit on nobody, but some of them too hardcore, some of them too softcore. Now uh any advice? Maybe there's somebody watching this right now, and circumstances could be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's but true. Let, but let's say there's somebody watching this, and they're thinking, they're 50-50. Should I join the military? Regardless of the branch, should I join the military? Should I not? Join. I say join. If you're, gonna, if you're on that fence, join. Join, 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 because you're going to get that experience that I'm telling you. I mean, it's so much. Just depending on what you do. Well, I ain't gonna even say depending on what you do, because the motherfuckers had me doing shit. That was not my, I was a military intelligence analyst and I did all types of shit, so. Join, do, do it. In regards to the music, 
Would it be safe to say, if you didn't join the military, maybe you wouldn't be doing music right now? That's safe to say. That's safe to say. Because, I mean, I told you, my boy man is really was making me do that. So, like, if he wasn't making me do it, but, like, just the actions that happened, that it motivated me. I say it motivated me a lot because I know I'm good. I know I'm good. I ain't heard nobody say I'm bad yet. They, they, they might have to say it in the comments or something.